Nebraska Extension Beef Feedlot Nutrition Specialist Galen Erickson says a specific variety of corn may offer value to producers finishing cattle. Galen says UNL researchers have been studying Enogen corn from Syngenta over the last few years. He joined us recently in the R.B. Warren Arena on UNL's East Campus, where we began by asking what's different about this variety of corn. Similar to Enogen that they probably heard about for ethanol plants, uh, Enogen feed corn has amylase enzyme that gets activated and amylase helps break the starch down inside the cattle and ironically cattle are not very good at digesting corn. The cattle themselves aren't. Microbes in the rumen are really good at digesting corn. In fact, they might digest some corn too fast and that's what causes acidosis at times in cattle. But uh, once it gets to the small intestine, the cattle themselves are not great at digesting corn. And so we were interested whether this corn would actually improve starch use by cattle. Outline for me your study. Yeah, we've done multiple experiments and uh, we've tested it primarily as dry rolled corn and with dry rolled corn type diets, uh, integin feed corn compared to similar genetic corn or, or even commercial corn. We see an improvement in feed conversion. It's been a bit variable, but three to 15%. You mentioned dry rolled corn. What's the difference when you use it as a high moisture corn? Yeah, we did do one experiment where we put it up as either high moisture or dry rolled corn. And when it was processed as high moisture corn, it, it didn't improve performance at all. And, and that makes some sense because the high moisture corn is mostly used in the rumen. That's why it's a little greater risk for acidosis. And since it's mostly used in the rumen, we're not seeing an improvement there. And then there's not as much left when it gets to the intestine. And so it's just harder to improve high moisture corn. And so uh, I think it's all been logical that this fits in dry rolled corn, maybe whole corn, but we've not tested that type diet. So it's gonna fit for smaller farmer feeders. Any impact to meat quality, carcass scoring? Yeah, in all of our studies as normal, we carry this through and collect traditional carcass data. In our studies, you know, when, we, when we've designed these, we uh, fed all the cattle the same number of days. And so in some cases, the indigent feed corn fed cattle got a little fatter. So if anything, we saw a little bit increase in marbling, maybe a little bit fatter carcasses. But I think that's a reflection of them doing better and, and then being fed a little to the same number of days, being a little fatter at the end. One of the obvious questions, as always, is there an extra associated cost with this? Well, I think Syngenta is working on marketing now and lining up seed for this coming year. And, and my understanding is, is that there's really no extra cost. And so what I've been telling producers is that uh, it's kind of a no risk. In other words, if you're going to plant corn and feed it as dry rolled corn, uh, try this. And uh, I think they'll see uh, potentially a three to five, six, seven percent improvement in, in feed efficiency. Where does the research go from here? Well, we're exploring that with Syngenta. I know we have been asked a lot of questions when we've had these meetings, and so uh, they've got to decide some of that direction. But, you know, I have questions on does it fit in other whole corn type diets, and then uh, how does it work in silage to just make sure we've addressed any questions producers raise. So we have plans, but uh, ultimately that direction will be kind of up to Syngenta. Mm -hmm.